Hello everyone, Jolene here from Bookworm Adventure Girl. Welcome back. And if you are new, thanks for checking out my channel. Today is the first Tuesday of the year, um, which means it's Tag Tuesday. One of the plans I had set for myself and well, for my channel in 2022 was to do more tags. And I have been tagged by a couple of people and I do have those tags coming up in the next few weeks. But for the first Tag Tuesday of 2022, I am very excited and a little nervous uh, to be doing my first ever original book tag. I'm calling it the Atwood Adventure Tag because last year I completed the 52 episodes in the Mondays with Margaret series. For that series, I read all or, or almost all of Atwood's work and it was a literary adventure to say the least. So I thought to celebrate, I would do an Atwood inspired tag. It is not about books at all and you do not have to have read any Atwood books. Um, you don't even have to know who Margaret Atwood is. <laughs> so um, this is just for fun and to get to know each other a little bit more. So here we go with prompt number one. Before publishing her first collection of poetry in the early 60s, Margaret Atwood had several other jobs, including working at summer camps. What was your first job? Well, I did what a lot of kids do and I babysat for uh, neighbors, but my very first real job um, was working at a packaging factory and I was really, really young. It was basically child labor, uh, well, when I started. Uh, but I ended up working there for seven to eight years, maybe even longer. And I was promoted a couple of times. Um, in many ways, I grew up in that factory and I learned a lot. We packaged stove, lawnmower, chainsaw and RV parts. And I eventually became a buyer for the stove, chainsaw and RV parts. So I have some knowledge about those things, which is now that I think about it, Kind of strange. Prompt number two. While growing up, Margaret Atwood's family spent several months each year living in the bush in Northern Ontario. What is a survival skill that you have that would help you survive living off the grid? Um, I don't think that I would last long if I had to live off the land. I don't know how to hunt or trap or anything like that. I, I could fish. But I think the things that I would bring to this is like once we had the food, uh, I happen to be a pretty good campfire cook. Um, I've cooked fish, meat, and even a roast for many people on the campfire. Um, I'm also good at starting fires uh, and you know, I can you know do stuff like that. So number three, Margaret Atwood grew up reading comic books. Do you have a favorite comic book or comic book character? I am not a huge comic book fan, uh, but growing up, I loved the Archie comics and they would have them at the checkouts, you know, at the grocery store. And every time I asked my mom if we could get one, she always said yes. I don't ever remember her saying no. And then I would like, I'd be so excited and I would go home and I would devour the entire comic book in a day or two. Margaret Atwood is not only a poet and author, she has also illustrated books and shown her creativity in so many other ways. What are some ways that you are creative? Okay, this is harder for me than I thought. Uh, one of the things that I have been known to do, and um, I don't know how good I am at it, you'd have to maybe ask some other people about that, um, but people have asked me to do this for them. I have taken well-known songs and I've changed the lyrics to, the, to them to like fit an occasion. So I've done that for birthdays and retirements and things like that. So I've changed the lyrics to um, Leaving on a Jet Plane, American Pie. Um, and I've also written our Christmas letters sometimes to like Twas the Night Before Christmas. And so I do weird stuff like that. Uh, some of Margaret Atwood's writing is inspired by myths, folktales, and fairy tales. What is your favorite myth, folktale, or fairy tale, and why? Uh, this is much harder for me than it probably should be, too. I certainly learned of folktales and fairy tales as a kid, but I don't, I don't know what my favorite would be. There isn't one that really sticks out 
above the rest for me. I do remember being like gobsmacked by the idea of Rapunzel's hair being so long and strong enough for someone to actually be able to climb up it. Uh, Margaret Atwood's most well-known novel is The Handmaid's Tale. What is the task or chore you wish you had a maid or servant for? Uh, this would be between cooking or cleaning for me. And I think that I would choose cleaning because I do enjoy making meals for people. Uh, I do enjoy trying new recipes and, and that sort of thing. But cleaning really can feel like a chore. So having someone, you know, to clean and not having to think about that, that would be great. The themes Margaret Atwood writes about have stayed consistent in her writing for over six decades. She writes about the role of men and women in society, religion, marriage, and identity, to name a few. If Atwood were to write a novel about you, what are some themes she would have to include? Who came up with these questions? Okay, so um, I think my top three would be themes of home, adventure and people. Um, home because home can be many things and it definitely has a lot of meaning in my life. I have many homes and I have so much gratitude for that. Um, adventure, not just because it's part of my channel name, uh, but I really do think adventure can be found in most things. Um, and I've lived a pretty adventurous life and that, um, you know, doesn't mean that it has to be dangerous or anything like that. Um, but to have meaningful and memorable experiences. Now, some of them have been dangerous, uh, but I will save those stories for another book tag. Um, and then people, obviously, because I really enjoy people and getting to know them. Um, I like to hear people's stories and to learn from them. Margaret Atwood has created words and used them in her novels. She has talked about how this makes it difficult for her translators of her work. Do you have a favorite word? Why is it your favorite? So I find this very interesting, the whole idea of making up new words. I, I don't do that, but I do like to play with words and say them differently. So like Jeopardy, I might play with that word and say, you know, Geopardy or Jeopardy. Um, a favorite word, and this is maybe a little weird, but I love the word indubitably. <laughs> um, it means absolutely or without a doubt. It's a word that is not used nearly enough in my opinion. Um, my father taught me about the word indubitably when I was really young, probably like five or six, and I have always been a bit fascinated by it, indubitably. It, it almost sounds like, you know, someone played around with the word already, <laughs> um, but it really is the word. So. Anyway, I do think indubitably should be used more. Margaret Atwood was born in Canada and lives in Canada, but she has also lived in other countries like the United States, England, France, Germany, and Scotland. What countries have you lived in and or what, what is another country that you would like to live in? Um, I have only lived in Canada, but I have lived in three different provinces in Canada. Um, I was born and raised in British Columbia, um, I then lived in Ontario for over 30, three decades, um, and now I live in Alberta. So if I were to choose a different country to live in, um, I would maybe choose Italy or Australia. I have been drawn to both countries and have thought, you know, many times that I could probably make a life for myself there. Margaret Atwood is an advocate for caring for the earth. What is something you do to help take care of our planet? Well, I have always been big on recycling and reusing if possible. Um, since we moved to Calgary, one of the newer things that I am slowly working on is having less waste. So there is an apothecary not too far from where I live and you can bring in your jars and containers and you know have them refilled um, for a number of things, shampoo, soap, those kind of things. Um, they also offer alternatives to detergents and storage containers to help reduce plastics. So it's a work in progress, but uh, I think it's important. Margaret Atwood is passionate about animal rights and some of her writing has included animals and reflections on animals. What is a topic that you are passionate about? 
Um, I think that some of the topics I am passionate about have come out in my reading and even some of my videos. Uh, many of you already know that in Indigenous initiatives and stories are important to me, as is hearing the stories of genocide survivors. So those are two heavier topics, but I guess even literature as a topic might be might be pretty obvious, but it is a part of who I am, so I would have to say literature as well. Margaret Atwood is supportive of new authors in a variety of ways. Who is a newer author and or what debut novel do you wish more people knew about? Uh, for this, I am going to mention an author I have mentioned a few times already. Um, and that is Matthew J. Sullivan and his debut novel, Midnight at the Bright Ideas Bookstore. This book is now like three or four years old, but I loved how it was written. I loved the characters. I loved the suspense. And I was just so surprised that the book didn't get more recognition and attention when it came out. And I'm also anxiously awaiting a new book from him. The final prompt, as usual, is tag some of your favorite booktubers. Um, I'm going to tag a number of people to get this going. So I'm going to choose uh, 10 booktubers. So I'm going to start with Jane from Lady Jane Books, Summer from Cozy Reading with Quaker Cats, Gemma from Gem of Books, AJ from AJ Dunn Reads and Writes, Pay from Attention, Sandy from Miss Reads a Lot, Fraser from Fraser Simons, Springboard Thought, Shelley from Shelley Swearingen's Library, Jim from Jim's Books, Reading and Stuff, and David from David Wiley. If you have time and you are up for it, I would love to hear your answers to this tag. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and don't forget to make every day an adventure.